Today we're looking at Frederick Douglass. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So today, Frederick Douglass, arguably one of the most well-known and important abolitionist leaders of the 1800s. And Douglass was a former slave himself that spent his entire life fighting for equal rights and freedom for all people. So let's look at some of his background. Douglas was born uh, in, into slavery in 1818 in Talbot County, Maryland. And Douglas himself actually never knew his exact birth date. And that was actually pretty common for a lot of slaves that they never knew exactly what their real birthday uh, was. But his birth name was actually Frederick Bailey. And he takes on the name Douglas once he escapes to try to keep himself from being recaptured. So as a child, uh, he was able to learn the alphabet from one of his slave owners. And from there, he was able to teach himself to read and write. Once he learns how to read and write, then he begins to teach other slaves to be able to read and write. And of course, the slave owners did not like that. Because remember, one of the best ways to keep someone in bondage or to keep them under your control is to make sure they're not educated. So slave owners did not want slaves to be educated. So once it's found out that he's teaching others to read and write, he was sent to another plantation that was known for being very brutal. And Douglas was, you know, beaten several times here at this other plantation. This was around, the, he was around the age of 16 when this occurs. But it's after that that he really begins to try to escape. And he had several failed escape attempts. In, in 1838, at the, about the age of 20, uh, he's able to get on board a northbound train going through Delaware. And he has the papers of a friend. And remember, at this time, African Americans had to carry papers to prove that they were free to travel. And so these, these papers did didn't describe Frederick Douglass. They described someone else, and he was very fearful that they might discover that he was not really the person in the papers, but he's able to get to New York City, luckily. And once he gets there, he sends back for a fellow slave named Anna Murray, and Anna Murray arrives in New York. They get married there, and then from there, they move to New Bedford, Massachusetts, and it's there that they take on the last name of Douglass, again, to try to protect their identity and not be recaptured. But it's while in New Bedford that Frederick begins to attend abolitionist meetings, and while these abolitionist meetings, he gets introduced to William Lloyd Garrison. Remember, William Lloyd Garrison was that big abolitionist leader, the publisher of that big paper, The uh, Liberator. And so Garrison begins to really encourage Douglas to get up and speak and talk about his experience as a slave. And you got to remember how big this was for the abolitionist movement. To have a former slave that was literate, that was el an eloquent speaker, as Douglas was, was huge because this was someone who had experienced it firsthand and, and what, a, what a great testimony it was of how terrible slavery was. And so by 1843, Douglas was part of the American Anti-Slavery Society's six-month tour of the U.S. spreading the message of anti-slavery. Now, of course, during this time, Douglas actually gets beaten at a lot of these uh, events. You remember, being an abolitionist was not a safe thing to do. There were a lot of people that were against it. But in 1845, he published the book, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave which really, you know, was his biography that, that, you know, showed how terrible and evil slavery was. One of Douglas's famous quotes, and this is a quote that I love from Frederick Douglass, he would say, I appear before you this evening as a thief and a robber. I stole this head, these limbs, this body from my master and ran off with them. So he basically displayed how absurd and how evil it was for someone to say that one human can own another human, be another human being. I just love that quote from Frederick Douglass. So by 1847, he was publishing his own abolitionist newspaper called the North Star. And also in 1848, he attends the Seneca Falls Convention, which was a, a convention pushing for equal rights for women. So uh, once the Civil War breaks out in 1861, he goes on to be an advisor to President Lincoln. He meets with President Lincoln several times. He also uh, is instrumental in recruiting African-American troops to fight in uh, in the war. Now, of course, when the war is over, slavery is eliminated. There's, there's amendments that are passed that try to guarantee, you know, citizenship and equal rights and non-discrimination for uh, African-Americans. But of course, we know how all that went, that, you know, states just simply do not abide by it. And discrimination is still terrible in, in several states. And so Douglas continues his fight for equal rights and fight for liberty for people. And so after the war, he, he holds several different positions within the government. Um, he's active and, you know, fighting again for equal rights for African-Americans and women. Uh, in 1878, he moved to his estate, Cedar Hill, overlooking Washington, D.C. And from there, he could walk down into the city, meet with congressmen, and again, fight for equal rights. And it's interesting, actually, in 1888, he's the first African-American to receive a vote for president at the Republican National Convention. Of course, he doesn't receive the nomination. On February 20th, 1895, 
that Douglas died of a heart attack at Cedar Hill. And actually, just that day, he had been attending a women's suffrage meeting uh, in Washington, D.C. So again, just think about the life of Frederick Douglass. Absolutely remarkable. In a time period when he was not considered to be a human being just simply because of the color of his skin, and he was considered to be the property of someone else, it is absolutely remarkable that he escapes from that moves on to become an advisor to the president and moves on to change the entire world and begin to change people's ideas about, you know, what is right and what is fair and what is freedom. So hopefully you learned something there and thanks for watching.